what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Papa Payne, back for another anime review video. And uh, we got ourselves another project. <laughs> so if you are paying attention to what's been going on in the anime community for the last few weeks, you've probably seen that a certain billionaire has started talking about anime. Yep, Elon Musk for a while made the entire community flip their shit when he replied to someone asking, if he has seen Neon Genesis Evangelion and replied to that person with only one word, nerve. Now, if you were to ask me, one of two things happened. Either A, he has actually watched the show and is a fan of it, which is no surprise to anybody whatsoever, or B, he doesn't know what Evangelion is and just straight up Googled it and tweeted the first word he saw, but I digress. No, but seriously, the reason why I'm uh, I'm mentioning this is because these tweets were one of a, a few things that inspired me to talk about Evangelion's movie series, the rebuild of Evangelion now rather than later, uh, in addition to a couple of people requesting that I review uh, these series of movies, and that there was a couple of people who actually asked me what Evangelion was because of these tweets and because they know that I talk about this stuff on the internet. But before we really dig deep into this, for people who don't know what I'm talking about, back in late June, I made a review on a show, again, called Neon Genesis Evangelion, and not only did I review the show like I was supposed to do, but I also talked about the backstory of the show and the story about its creator, Hideaki Anno, and about a couple of weeks later, I re reviewed the end of Evangelion, uh, one of the two movies that came out after the TV series, and as well as reviewing the movie and the story behind it, I also put my two cents in on uh, what the ending meant and the meaning of the live action sequences at the end of the movie, and speaking of which, for anyone who's seen the movie and or the review, uh, do you remember the, the clip of the three people facing away from the camera dressed up as Rey, Asuka, and Masato uh, in the middle of a marketplace? Well, I hate to break it to you, those aren't people. It was actually revealed on Reddit a couple of months ago that they were actually mannequins. I swear to God, this movie and this franchise is just giving me more questions than answers here, and it's just getting me more fascinated with it. it it's, it's giving me more questions like, you know, why did Hideaki Anno or Studio Gainax or someone decide to use mannequins instead of actresses? Uh, why does the Ray mannequin look like that, uh, look like she's about to be a fucking linebacker? I mean, she has fucking shoulder pads, not that she's the only one that has shoulder pads. And who the fuck is the guy in the back? I mean, he looks like he's the guy that made up the idea to, to put the mannequins there. He, he, he's basically that one guy who would do the weirdest shit possible, yet no one would call him out on it because they would just be fine with it. But anyway, in the end, uh, both of those videos got pretty popular. Uh, for a while, the end of Evangelion video, even though uh, about half the video was edited very poorly, uh, ended up being the most viewed video on my channel before it got taken out of the first place spot by... <sighs> Kiss X Sis, of all things. Uh, I'll link both videos in the description for anyone who wants to see it. Again, I gotta warn you, uh, the end of Ava review, I took something out of it. There was a clip that I, that I actually put in the review. I uploaded it, and then Studio Kara, of all people, actually copyrighted it. They actually took the video down, so I actually, I had to put, I had to take the clip out, but I didn't move all the other clips I had after that. It was about halfway through the video. I'm giving you the warning now before you watch it. For the Neon Genesis review, it should be fine, uh, as far as I know, uh, but I just wanted to mention that. And before I get into the review of the actual movie, uh, as usual, when it comes to talking about Ava, uh, let's, let's bring you guys up to speed in terms of how the movies were made and really what happened after that. So although the first movie didn't come out until late 2007, Hideaki Anno, the creator uh, of Evangelion in general, initially started working on the project in the fall of 2002, spending the next six months on pre-production, which included watching the entire Neon Genesis TV series back to back before deciding to work on other projects. And it wasn't until September of 2006 that it was publicly announced that they were that they're they going to be releasing a retelling of the original Ava story through four new movies made by Hideaki Anno's new animation studio, Studio Kara. And then in November, it was announced that most of the staff and cast of the original series and Studio Gainax would be working on this project. And when Anno was first 
interviewed for the first time in December of 2006, he said that he was happy that you know he could tell the story of Neon Genesis Evangelion in his own way, in his own like where he is basically the only one in charge of it without any you know distractions from anybody else or any budget restrictions. Because I mentioned in my Neon Genesis review that the budget was very low that they were close to the production deadline in almost every episode they had because of how cheap they were and now with this new studio and with the implementation of cg animation because it's been 12 years since the series uh that he basically has the opportunity to basically do whatever he wants basically i keep saying the word basically a lot i need to work on that and so with that, for the entire movie series, he became the general director and manager. The release schedule for all four films has experienced a lot of delays, but because this video is about the first movie, I'm only going to be talking about uh, the delays that the first movie had. It was originally uh, going to be released in the summer of 2007 and said it was released in the fall. So with that, let's get into the review. Here is the one, the only, Evangelion 1.0 or 1.11. You are not alone. Ava 1.0, or Evangelion 1.0, You Are Not Alone, was co-directed by Hideaki Anno and Kazuya Sudomaki, the same two guys who directed the end of Evangelion, and it was made by Studio Kara in partnership with Studio Gainax, as they helped out with the first movie, and then about a month before the movie was released, Hideaki Anno resigned from Studio Gainax. Uh, it was released in Japan on September 1st, 2007, and it was 101 minutes long, one hour and 41 minutes. I think I should say this before I begin. Uh, again, to anyone who's never seen the series before, you have been warned about incoming spoilers about the movie, about the series, and about the show. I, I, I haven't really said that a lot. I should have, but you know, let's just hope this uh, begins a habit of mine where I, where I mention spoilers. All right, and with that out of the way, let's get into the movie. Just like in the series, the movie starts off in the year 2015, 15 years after a catastrophic event known as the Second Impact when a 14-year-old boy named Shinji Ikari is sent to Tokyo 3 and is being recruited by his estranged father Gendo Ikari, who is the commander of a paramilitary organization known as NERV, to pilot a giant bio-machine known as Evangelion Unit 1 so he can fight against an angel that's threatening Tokyo 3. But after Shinji won't get in the fucking Ava, Gendo guilt trips Shinji into piloting it after threatening to put in an injured pilot named Rei Ayanami in the Ava instead. The battle later ends with the Ava going apeshit and Shinji getting seriously injured. After the battle, Shinji moves in with Nerve Captain Masato Kataragi and is enrolled at the local middle school where Shinji runs into problems with fellow classmate Toji Suzuhata, whose sister was injured in the battle. But when the fifth angel arrives, Toji and fellow classmate Kenzuke Aida sneaks out of the emergency shelters that all the citizens were supposed to be in to watch the battle. In response to this, Masato, who is overlooking the battle from Nerve headquarters, they have the two take cover in Unit 1's cockpit and orders Shinji to retreat, but he ignores that order and destroys the angel with Unit 1's knife. After the battle back at school, Toji forgives Shinji for what happened in the last battle, and they and they later become friends. Following this, uh, Shinji interacts with Rei Ayanami, the pilot who was originally injured, who is now back to health, and talks to her for the first time. Shortly afterwards, another powerful angel appears. This one is the sixth angel known as Ramiel. Uh, it k nearly kills Shinji with its beam attack and it proceeds to drill into the cavern below towards the geo front uh, into the area under Tokyo 3 uh, where Nerve headquarters is. When Shinji recovers from his injuries, uh, he is having second thoughts about going back into Eva, and that is when Masato takes him down to Central Dogma, where she shows him Lilith, which is in, which is in the form of a white giant hanging from a cross. Uh, Masato later explains that if an angel were to unite with Lilith, it would cause the third impact. Gee, I wonder how that turned out. But somehow, some way, it actually encourages Shinji to get back in the fucking Ava, and a plan is later to develop to defeat Ramiel by using all of the electrical power in the country of Japan to power an experimental positron rifle. That, that is the wording they use, which Unit 1 will use to snipe the Six Angel while Ray in Evangelion Unit 0 supports by blocking its attack. After his first shot fails to kill the Angel, Shinji successfully fires a second shot that kills the Six Angel in a very painful disturbing 
and agonizing death. But before he was able to get off the second shot, Rei is nearly killed def uh, defending Shinji from the angel's return fire, but he saves her life after killing the sixth angel by cooling Unit Zero in water and prying open its cockpit using Zero One's knife. And the movie ends with the fifth child himself, Kawaru Nagisa, making an appearance as he is talking to the leader of a mysterious organization known as Sele, and it ends with Kaoru saying that he wants to meet Shinji. To be completely honest, because that it is the first six episodes of the TV series, there isn't really that much to talk about, but I'll try my best with what I can talk about. And to start, to start things off, uh, the art in this movie is simply fabulous. Uh, the original series already had excellent artwork for its generation, yet it had barely any budget, and they've managed to improve on that. Uh, again, the introduction of CG was definitely a great move, and it made certain scenes even better, especially the, the fighting scenes. Uh, they completely redid the scenes with the fifth angel Ramiel, replacing traditional hand-drawn Ramiel with CG designs. And needless to say, that scene turned into absolute eye candy. It was fun to watch, regardless if you were actually paying attention to the movie or not. It, it made you glue your eyes onto the screen. Other uses and integration of CG were more subtle, such as introducing it into the graphs, computer charts in the background, and the, and the human character designs were sharpened a bit from the original, but otherwise it remained unchanged, which, you know, I don't really have a problem with. All I can say for the sound in this movie is that it remained mostly the same, but they did add a few new sound effects, most notably to the Avas and the Angels, and they added a really, really good new ending song for this. As for the characters, they, they remain virtually the same, except that they cut out a lot of Shinji's bitching and whining, which was one problem that I had with the TV series, and the reason why I uh, I dialed it down instead of like a 9 or a 10 or a 10 out of 10 to an 8 out of 10, because of the fact that 1. Shinji got way too much character development, and 2. Shinji was always whining all the time, and they completely dialed that down in the movie. All in all, uh, seeing this movie was definitely fun to watch because they basically took the original series and remade it with better graphics with a few with a few minor changes so that it's enjoyable to watch without feeling that it's the same as the original series yet not different enough that it strays away from its original roots that this movie is actually a good enough retelling that a newcomer to Ava can watch this instead of the original series and will be able to know nearly everything that happened. Of, of course, it's not really recommended seeing how it's the original that was so profound and revolutionary, but after seeing this, all it did for me was hype me up to review Ava 2.0, which I have a lot of shit to talk about, and Ava 3.0, and gets me hyped up to watch the final movie, which comes out in 2020, Ava 3.0 plus 1.0. And with that, I'm going to give Evangelion 1.0 the same rating I'm, that I gave the TV series, which is an 8 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching my Ava 1.0 review video. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you want to see more anime review videos in the future, you can hit the subscribe button on the screen or down below as well. And if you want to see more anime review videos that I made in the past, not only will there be uh, review videos on the screen or down on my channel. I've also linked a few in my de in the description uh, for you guys to see. Uh, just like in the last video, I, I, I decided to do that last minute, but yeah, I'm going to try and implement that into all my videos. And with that out of the way, once again, my name is Payne, and see you in the next video.